بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا حبيب الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين وألحقهم بدرك الجحيم قال إمامنا الحسين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أريد أن أمر بالمعروف وأنهى عن المنكر وأسير بسيرة جدي وأبي علي بن أبي طالب صدق إمامنا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه The subject of أمر بالمعروف أنهي عن المنكر is of great importance in Islam and we know one of the obligatory issues in Islam in Furu'a Deen is Amr Bil Ma'roof and Nay Alil Munkar enjoining good and forbidding evil. The society will not be prosperous unless they practice these two things. Enjoying good means ask each other to perform their religious duties and whatever good they encourage each other so that will bring happiness all over the society. And if somebody does wrong, they should not say we are not concerned. I am, this is not my business. I don't care. No, they have to forbid wrong and ask the people not to do wrong because that's wrong may be learned by others and from one to one till that wrong will prevail all over the society and will spoil all the society. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once he gave an example that if some people are on a ship uh, at the middle of the sea and somebody want to make a haul on his own seat now, if the other people stop him from making a hole in that seat, then he will be saved and they will be saved. But if they leave him to do what he wants, that is his seat, he wants to make a hole in the seat, it's up to him. But when he makes a hole in the seat, naturally water will come and all the ship will be drowned and all of them will be drowned. So he said, if they leave him, he will be drowned and they will be drowned. So it is not that the society say for the wrong things done, we are not concerned or we are, this is not our business and I don't care. No, that is not, not correct. We have to encourage people to do good things and discourage them from doing anything wrong or evil. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, says about his stand that the aim is Amr bil Ma'roof and Nay Alil Munkar. It looks there were a lot of wrong things prevailing in the society. The people are not aware of it. And a lot of religious obligations the people should do, uh, but still they are not doing it. So that is creating a problem and the society um, deviated from the right path, path step by step. When the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you saw Muawiyah on my pulpit, then you kill him. He, he has no right to sit on the pulpit of the Holy Prophet. And Muawiyah came to Medina and he sat on the pulpit of the Prophet. And the people were careless about it. Ultimately, Bani Umayyah came who killed the innocent people, robbed the money of the Ummah, misused the economy of the people, and did a lot of injustice. Everybody was suffering, but still that is what they did because they have not stopped 
the wrongdoers from um, doing uh, that wrong. In other hadith, وَلَا تَتْرُكُ الْأَمْرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالنَّهِي عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ فَيُوَلِّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ شِرَارَكُمْ ثُمَّ تَدْعُونَ فَلَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَكُمْ Don't leave the uh, Amr bil-Ma'roof in joining good or forbidding evil. Uh, otherwise, the worst people among you will rule, and then you will pray to Allah to uh, remove that tyranny from you, but Allah will not respond to you. Because that is because of your wrongdoing. You have not fulfilled your duty of Amr bil Ma'roof and Nay an al Munkar. We see some examples in our time. This also is practical. When the Ba'athist people in Iraq in 1968, they came into power, the late Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhsin al-Hakim, he knew that these people are very uh, bad people because there were a previous experience in 1963, they came for six months into power and they used to jail the people, kill the people, the innocent people, and uh, try to rule by force without taking care of uh, or respecting the human life. So he started uh, his movement and he came from Najaf to Baghdad. Uh, the apparent excuse was that he's sick, but then the people, all of them, came to welcome the marja from all cities they came to Baghdad. And that was the idea to tell the government that, look, thousands of the people are with the marja. If you will do something wrong, I will tell the people to topple your government. But then the Iraqi government made a plan and they put in TV that his son was sitting with someone from foreign countries and then they said among the, well, the crowd uh, that these people are linked to the um, superpowers and they are not honest. The people were fooled with that and they left the Marja's house and he remained alone when the intelligence came asking to check for his son and to capture his son there. And he was forced to come back to Najaf alone. Uh, almost one year of end of his life, he was in house, um, uh, not arrest, actually, he himself did not want to uh, meet the people as a type of telling the people that this government is not good government. But still, the people were not caring about that. What was the result in 1970 when he died? Uh, we see the Ba'ath Party get stronger and stronger, and they start killing the people, killing the innocent people, and creating a lot of problems for 35 years. And from that, two, three million people were killed in war and in jail and with the torture which was given and so on, types of uh, mischief done by the Ba'ath Party. If the people at that time would have supported the merger, naturally they would not have suffered what has happened. But sometimes the people are uh, careless or maybe are fooled, brainwashed by the government and they think that yes, well, why should we care? It is not our business, we should not uh, uh, participate in that. Well, maybe in the recent history also, the fatwa of Ayatollah Sistani, may Allah elongate his life, uh, to took a stand against the terrorism in Iraq has saved the uh, religious cities of Najaf and Karbala and south of Iraq from being attacked by Daesh and other terrorist groups. Uh, they took the west of Iraq and uh, partly Mosul in north of Iraq, but because the people supported the fatwa of the merger, they could stop them not to attack other parts of Iraq. Otherwise, 
uh, maybe all Iraq, all the cities would have been affected and tens of thousands of people would have been killed uh, mercilessly by Daesh. Uh, and that is what they did in Mosul and Anbar and, and other areas. So what I mean, uh, it is a duty of the people to enjoy good and forbid wrong, not to say, I don't care. As long as I am safe, I don't care about others. No, that is not, not right. We have to be careful to enjoy good and forbid wrong. The Ummah at that time, time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, because of long duration of ruling of Muawiyah from the year 40 till the year 60, uh, Muawiyah killed thousands of people, followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, and he gave an order that anyone who is known as a Shia, you, you demolish his house and stop giving the salary, whatever uh, the family, his family deserves, not to be given to them. So his family will suffer, and then they have no house, no shelter to stay there. And then later on, he intensified the order. He said, whoever you think, there is no proof, but maybe he is also loving Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, then you demolish his house and uh, let his family suffer of hunger, uh, no fun to be given to them. So that, uh, you know, continued for 20 years. Ziyad ibn Abi was the ruler of Muawiyah on Kufa and Basra, and he knew the Shias, uh, that is why they killed uh, thousands of them. When Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad came to Kufa, <coughs> before him, Muslim ibn Aqil was there. The people of Kufa wrote to Imam Hussein that you are the Imam and we are doing bay'at with you, we pledge allegiance with you, 18,000 letter came to Imam Hussein, each letter signed by one person or two people or three people. And they said, all of us are ready to welcome you. Imam Hussein alayhi salam sent his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil. And he wrote to people of Kufa, I have sent you thiqati min ahli bayti, the one who is trustworthy from among my uh, ahli bayt, my household. That, of course, is a, a great uh, praise for Muslim that he is a trustworthy, and Imam Hussein uh, praised him with that. Muslim ibn Aqil came, and the people uh, pledged allegiance with him on behalf of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. And he wrote to Imam Hussein that the people are uh, ready and there are 30,000 people, they um, pledged allegiance with me, and they are waiting for your coming. At that time, the ruler from Bani Umayyah's side were Nu'man ibn Bashir. He was not um, a cruel man and did not want to kill the innocent people unnecessarily. But the, some hypocrites were there in Kufa. They wrote to Yazid that the Kufa will uh, surrender to Muslim ibn Aqil and Imam Hussein, and you have to send somebody to control the situation. Uh, Yazid had a uh, Sir John, someone who, is, uh, who was secretary of his father, Muawiyah, ask him, what should I do? He said, if Muawiyah would have been alive and tell you to do something, will you do it? He said, yes. Then he had a letter and showed him that Muawiyah was writing a will to his son Yazid that uh, the people of Kufa will not leave Hussein ibn Ali without calling him to be their imam. In that case, if that happened, then make Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad the ruler of Kufa. So he wrote a letter to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who was his ru ruler in uh, governor of Basra, and told him, you are now governor of both Basra and Kufa. And you go to Kufa quickly and control the situation. Ibn Ziyad came to Kufa. And when he came, he was with 
few number of people, 40, 50 people, very few number. Uh, with the police of Qasr al-Ibara, they were only about two, 300, not many people there. Now the Kufa, uh, tens of thousands of people are there. They could fight and could topple Ibn Ziyad. But the people did not have that gut to move, especially when Ibn Ziyad threatened them that the police from Sham is coming and they are going to kill you and to fight with you. When naturally people of Kufa could resist people of Sham because their number is great. Uh, and they already fought in Safin. Uh, they were with Imam Ali salam against Muawiyah. However, the situation changed. There were so many hypocrites there, so many people who had uh, relation with Bani Umayyah, who have money, heads of a tribes, they used to get money from Muawiyah at that time. So they were inclined toward Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Muslim ibn Aqil uh, found himself at risk and he went to house of Hani ibn Urwa. Hani ibn Urwa was head of his tribe and he was uh, uh, hidden there. Uh, one time, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad came to visit Hani ibn Urwa since he is head of his tribe. And they told Muslim that when he entered the house, you come and kill him. Uh, and Muslim was behind uh, curtain. And then uh, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad came to visit Hani ibn Urwa. They were waiting for Muslim to come and kill him. But Muslim did not do that. Later on, when Ibn Ziyad left, they asked him, why you did not kill him? He said, well, I remember the hadith from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Islam qayyad al-fatk. If somebody is a Muslim, even if he is my enemy, I am not allowed to attack him. If he attack me, okay, face to face, that is right. But if somebody come innocently and without attack, peacefully, I cannot attack him, even if he is enemy cannot attack you see the value the true values of islam are represented by that that you see the enemy there someone cruel man like ibn ziyad and can be killed easily by muslim ibn aqil still he said no islamic values said you are not allowed to attack people when they come in peace they are not coming in war when they come to fight yes you can fight with them but if they come in peace you cannot attack them. However, later on, Ibn Ziyad has his own intelligence and understood that Muslim ibn Aqil is in house of Hani ibn Urwa. And he called Hani to come and visit him. When Hani came, he told him that Muslim ibn Aqil is in your house. You have to surrender him to me. Hani refused and he said, that is not possible. So most, uh, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad uh, captured Hani and ultimately um, uh, injured him. His people were 4,000 people. They came around Qasr al-Imara. And they hear their leader is in house of Qasr al-Imara, in that castle of the government. And he is in a trouble. But then uh, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad told Shurayh al-Qadi, the judge, Tell the people that uh, your master is alive, is not dead. So he told them that he is alive. Uh, and the people said, okay, if he is alive, then we have no problem. They did not say that, okay, let us come and see him. He may be at risk. He may be in jail. He may be in a trouble. He may be tortured. See, simply they said, okay, if he is alive, then okay, we had no problem. And they left the... Uh, the castle of government, ultimately uh, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad killed Hani and threw his body uh, from uh, uh, roof down and now the people saw that their leader is dead and they kept it quiet. You see, they did not practice Amr bil Ma'roof and Nay al Munkar because they were helpless, fooled by the media by the um, fear of 
Bani Umayyah, fear of the army to come from Sham. Well, they could have taken uh, revenge from their master who was killed innocently, and then the situation would have been changed completely. Then Imam Hussein alayhi salam, if he would have come and Ibn Ziyad would not have been there, maybe the people, the people's support were sufficient that he will be the Imam and he will run the Islamic government and the face of Islamic history would have been changed. But the people sometimes are like that. They take the wrong decision, unfortunately. And that has a very bad consequences because after that, naturally, Bani Umayyah ruled. And Bani Umayyah ruled, used to kill the innocent people to take the money, the wealth, and spend it lavishly on themselves without caring for the people. Um, anyhow, Muslim ibn Aqil, uh, when he realized that Hani ibn Urwa was assassinated, he came out to the mosque and prayed the Jama'at prayer. The, his people who were around him, they were waiting, I mean, secretly at the time to uh, take a stand, but that now uh, they see they have to hurry for that because of the intelligence of Bani Umayyah and the other people who are with Bani Umayyah. Now the people were thinking that, okay, let us be safe. We will not enter in this fight. Uh, the mother used to come and take her son. He said, okay, let others fight. You don't fight and so on. So after Isha prayer, Musa ibn Aqil looked around. There was nobody even to give him a shelter or show him the roads where to go. Of course, that does not mean there were no Shias there. There were more than 4,500 Shias jailed by Ibn Ziyad, like uh, Al-Mukhtar, like Suleiman Ibn Surad Al-Khuzai, and similar people, they were in jail. Not that there, no, nobody was there. So others were afraid because they knew a lot of people were put in jail, and some of them were executed, like Maytham al-Tamar, and similar great companions of Amir al muminin They were killed by uh, Ibn Ziyad. Uh, so Musa ibn Aqil came out and he was moving from uh, street to street till he reached a closed uh, um, road and he didn't know where to go because nobody now uh, is ready to give him shelter because Ibn Ziyad declared Whoever we found Muslim in his house will kill him. So the people were afraid. A lady called Tawa, she came out of the house. She found a little sound. She was looking for her son. Um, where is he? He's a bit late, did not come, and found a Muslim in the door. She asked him, you are a foreigner. Why are you are standing at the door of my house? He said, well, I need water. She gave him a glass of water, and then after that she realized that still Muslim is standing there. She said, oh, we are, I am not allowing you to stand here. Uh, this is my house, and you are not allowed. Go to your a tribe, go to your family. He said, well, I have no family in this area. My family is in Medina. She said, are you Muslim, Ibn Aqil? He said, yes. She said, okay, you are most welcome. And she gave him shelter there. But her son, when he came late, he was among the people with Ibn Ziyad. He realized that Muslim Ibn Aqil is in their house. So early morning, he went to Ibn Ziyad and told him that Muslim Ibn Aqil is here. Ibn Ziyad sent an army with Muhammad Ibn al Ash'ath. And they fought with Muslim. Muslim was very brave. They could not attack him, could not kill him. But then they made a um, uh, play. They dig the ground and covered it. Then when they withdraw, Muslim was attacking them. He fell down on the ground. Uh, they have captured him and brought him to Ibn Ziyad. Ibn Ziyad asked him that, why you are dividing the Muslims? You see, Ibn Ziyad, he is dividing the Muslim. He is putting the innocent people in jail. He is killing the innocent people. 
and tell Muslim you are dividing. He said, well, I am not dividing the Muslims. I came here and the people pledged allegiance for Imam Hussein with me. He said, we will kill you. He said, well, even if you kill me, I don't care. There is a day of judgment and we'll meet in the day of judgment. And ultimately, they took Muslim to the roof. He asked to offer two rak'at prayer. And from there, he sent his salam, said, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein was in the way he left uh, Mecca to the way, and he, by miracle, he heard the sound of Muslim Ibn Aqil and told him, Wa alayka salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon wa sa'alamu alladheena zalamu ayya man qalabin yanqalibun wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. اللهم انا نسالك وندعوك بجلال وجهك الكريم وقرانك العظيم وبمحمد واهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ان تعجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان وان تجعلنا من انصاره واعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم املا به الارض قسطا وعدلا كما ملئت ظلما وجورا اللهم اقض بمحمد وال محمد حوائجنا واشف بهم مرضانا وارحم بهم موتانا واغفر بهم ذنوبنا ووسع بهم أرزاقنا واحفظ بهم شبابنا وبناتنا من شر الشيطان وشر السلطان وطوارق الزمان اللهم لك الحمد أن وفقتنا لإحياء مجالس الإمام الحسين في الدنيا فتقبل ذلك بأحسن قبولك واجعل ذخرا لنا يوم لا ينفع مان ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم اللهم ارزقنا يوم القيامة شفاعة محمد وآل محمد ومن حوض الكوثر شرابهم وعلى الصراط مرافقتهم وارزقنا في الجنة مجاورتهم في أعلى عليين مع الشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وإلى روح موت الحاضرين وشيعة أمير المؤمنين ومن مات على الإيمان خصوصا من العلماء والشهداء رحم الله من يهدي لهم جميعا ثواب الفاتحة قبلها صلوات اللهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين